What's up guys, it's Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar coming to you from another undisclosed location. And today we're going to be building yet another solar array for some prepper preparedness minded customers. Just met Scott and Abe, aka Engineer775 here on the site and we're about to start digging holes. All right, boss, we're going to dig? Folks. Concrete's coming? Concrete's Pressure's coming. on? Pressure's on. Nice. Abe? Yeah, that's that, that's that ghost look right there. <laughs> that's a half snake, what we call that. Half snake? Yeah. We got our steel, our Sinclair, as always. This time we're going to be doing it on 14-foot centers instead of 17-foot centers. We got a ladder. We got a post laid out already, and we've got our array strung out and painted on the ground. Where the intersections are, that's where we're going to be digging. So we're already on 14-foot centers. Uh, we're going to start digging some holes. So I think a lot of people see the engineering on these, which I'll show you later on in this video. And they just go ahead and get intimidated. But if you're going to do a ground mount, you're going to have to do some digging anyway. So might as well just get a mid-size excavator. We're using a 35 horse. Mr. Engineer 775 has a Yanmar Bio 35. We're going to be using one of these to dig the trench for the electrical as well as the holes. We're not going to drill holes uh, with any kind of an auger. We're just going straight in the ground. We call them swimming pools. Uh, you're mainly just getting this concrete in the ground for the ballast. And uh, these holes take about 0.75 yards. I'll go over that and minimum post embedment and such uh, when I get to the spec sheet. but. Don't be intimidated by a hole, guys. It's, it's, at the end, these are a lot less work than a pipe mount where you're doing a ton of digging. And uh, you'll see that when we're done. So right now it's a blitz to get these four posts all screwed up and leveled before the uh, concrete gets here. Okay, so we got our first post up and we got our last post up. And we're using a laser level. You're gonna have to have a laser level for this. If you try to use this as string, you're probably going to get some string sag, even if it shows level. You're going to end up with a dip. So, um, we're putting gravel in the bottom of each hole. Choosing pea gravel. And, got a little bit of a grade to contend with, but that just means this hole isn't as deep as the first hole. Here we go, folks. We got the posts. They're strong and level. They are level. They are planed out, so the, this plane is right, rotationally, which rotation would be the top. And the plane is straight, so, you know, th there's some play in these posts. There's a little bit of twist, even when the concrete sets, but it's nice to start level so that you can get things as straight as you want, especially when you're working with a bunch of OCD people. Not OCD, it's perfection. So, waiting for concrete now, so it looks like we can eat some lunch. The concrete truck came early. We uh, make sure you get your conduits in place before pouring concrete, at least that last conduit, so you can have it looking real good when it comes up out of the ground. And uh, like I said, we're doing just under a yard per hole. These posts are in the ground. So, you're gonna get charged a minimum if you don't have a certain amount of concrete and usually four yards not a whole truck so you're gonna get charged extra anyway so why not dig a little bit better hole bigger hole and put a little more concrete oh, this is what we're using to set level magnetic post level once again there is a little bit of error it's factored in but we want them as straight as possible all right folks so we had a productive day yesterday got the solar array posts in the ground got the trench dug all the way to the house this is for a battery backup system but I'm showing you this side profile so you can just see how straight we ended up with everything so we up super straight and now they're swinging together the Sinclair rack and it goes together super easy it's, it's like a giant erector set so we've been through quite a few different ground mount systems we had uh, the, the Schletter years then we went over to DPW and Schletter went defunct. Don't forget Iron Ridge. We had Iron Ridge. We built some pipe mounts. And this is, we finally, I feel like we've arrived at a solution that as long as he can keep up with the demand, Mr. Kyle Sinclair, the Skyrack 
has both a fixed tilt and an adjustable tilt single post configuration and this is kind of what they're using in solar farms but it just goes together really quick super strong uh, super customizable and uh, it's made in the good old USA right boys it's got a good Michigan steel so I hope you enjoy this video on the sky rack and just kind of how we lay it out how we get things going in the beginning and just remember guys if you take your time and you start straight you got a lot better chance of ending up straight and uh aim small shoot small aim small shoot small don't forget your laser and that is the sky rack by sinclair designs so here's that sinclair mount one more time and you can see it really just consists of four different pieces you've got your post you got this uh, strut I always call this thing a girder but Sinclair calls it something else and then you've got your purlins which the panels mount to the purlins what do they call this uh, diagonal piece I can't remember what they call it a truss they call it a truss I call it a girder but uh, better call it a truss since that's what they call it but it's all rolled steel I mean this is basically a Z purlin it's pretty goofy and then uh, you got your that's rolled steel and there's that post head it's adjustable very adjustable you can see how many different holes you got you can really move stuff around but like I always say the straighter it is in the beginning the straighter it ends up this is your one side is 10, 20, 30, and the other side is 15, 25, 35. So I think we're at 30 degree tilt right we're now. We're at 35. Oh, we're at 35? Yeah, it depends on which chant which side you which face. Which side the you channel. face it, right? So we, we did 35 because that's about our latitude. But for the for the end result, the speed of install. And just the overall quality, uh, you really cannot beat this on a ground mount. I'm Johnny Valentine, Gain Solar. Thank you for watching this video on the Sinclair ground mount. Please give me a call or email me or reach out to me if I can help you in any way on your project. We're located in Northeast Georgia, but we do cover a wide area depending on how large the project is. So this is the Skyrack install manual. First thing we're going to go through a little bit is the Skyrack manual. They show you how it looks. And then of course it's got an adjustable tilt kit, fixed tilt, and it's got a motorized tilt. Scott and Abraham have used this. I have not used this yet. And there's some uh, just out of the box uh, ratings. You do have to kind of fill out a, a form every time you do this. There's a picture of the clamp right there. And there, this is all a roll-formed rack, so it comes off a, a big coil. There's the four parts I was telling you about. Or, they're not four, though. There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five main parts, and then you got your bolts. Um, let's go down here. So this is, this is the basics of this rack. Uh, it's made to be driven. But you can also set it in concrete, and that's perfectly okay. And that's what we do most of the time. However, Scott has purchased a post driver, and we're going to start driving them. So there's that 58-inch. And uh, the minimum post embedment, uh, it can vary, but you know you want to get a lot of concrete in there. The more concrete you have, the more weight you have, you're basically building a sail. So you, this concrete is a ballast. So there's a isometric kind of how it goes together. And then there's your 204 inch post spacing I was talking about. That's when you're working in uh, rows of five or 10 panel groups. And then you can also do it in 168, which would be ro rows of four. They're showing you how the uh, how to go on down the line. We have uh, what it should look like. You guys saw that in the video. And then there's panel installation and
this is what I was talking about, about which I'll talk a little more about, but you don't want to get in a situation where you're looking at the edge of this uh, last truss. Uh, we don't like that. So we always order the cantilevers. So now this is where they start talking about adding additional panels. Uh, he sells them basically in groups of 10, which is a 204 inch rail, groups of two, which would be a four, or groups of one where you bolt a cantilever onto the side. That's the 44 inch uh, purlin. And you can also buy a 168, I believe. Uh, he's got 88 inches. He's got a bunch of different ones. And then there's a 168 and a 132. Very configurable. There's the This is the 172 I was talking about. And uh, some of the numbers may have changed. I think we were messing with 168s. These are very configurable, what, what he's shown you. And this, this, this uh, installation guide, if you want to see it, I can email it to you. Um, but basically what I'm trying to show you is that you can, you can add it on in any increment you want. But 204 inch spacing at 17 feet between posts is really nice. So this is the C-Channel overview document that he sent me. And uh, I think this is helpful because it shows you kind of the profiles. And then always remember, guys, that an engineer is going to be the one that makes the final call on what the footing is. And if you do enough of these, you start to get a feel for what, you know, you can and can't do. But um, we basically have the same soils everywhere we go in the southeast. Soils very similar. Uh, it's like just red clay. And um, if, if we're on a hill or something, we, we might go deeper on one edge of the array than the other. But we're always pouring more than enough concrete. So we know we're going to have plenty of concrete. Um, once again, this is this is another graphic that kind of depicts what I was talking about with the... Uh, there's where you can add optional cantilevers. Uh, you can do it on 10 module groups or 8 module groups. So, you know, you can basically fit 10 modules in a 168 and... Or uh, 8 modules in a 168 and 10 modules in a 204 inch rail. So it's... They say 164 inch post spacing or 204 inch post spacing. Um, but I'm speaking of rail length. And then here's the concrete piers where they're showing you when you do a concrete pier, like, like you see in the video, we're not pouring uh, a round tube footer. We're not digging a round tube footer. We'd, that'd be another step for us. We'd have to put a drill on the end of our excavator. So we are just digging the holes, you know, swimming pool style and pouring you know, he's calling for a minimum of 0.58 yards of concrete. We're getting somewhere around a yard per hole. We like to bolt, overbuild everything anyway, and since we're getting charged for uh, a minimum, it doesn't really matter to us that much if we pour a little more concrete in. And then uh, this is uh, the ballasted mount, which I'm excited we're going to be doing a ballasted mount here in a couple of weeks. I have not done one of these yet, but I've always wanted to do one. And um, it looks really cool. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just you, you, you do a ballast block and you have rebar going through the post. So this is something that I just think Sinclair is just a super, super awesome product. So I appreciate you watching this video. I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar, taking you back to my Sinclair install.